And for the next speaker, uh, we share a lot of history together with uh, where he's coming from. And I think you all know what that means. So please welcome Roberto from Italy. Thank you. Okay. No. Can you hear me? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, just the clicker. Where is uh, Andre? Okay, thank you. Uh, so today I will talk about sleep attack, technical post-mortem. Uh, that doesn't mean that the game is actually dead. Uh, it means that it's shipped and the production is finished. Um, I'm Roberto Mangiafico. Uh, I'm a gameplay programmer since 2007 when I started in Ubisoft Milan. Uh, I worked on Oh, that, that's not the updated version of the presentation done. Uh, Andre, Andre, it's not the latest version of the presentation. It isn't. Cool. Okay. I'll try to, to uh, if you can look at the latest that I send you. Uh, for now, it's fine, but later there are some uh, image and code that make better uh, explain me all the problem. So I worked on some console titles, and 2012, I left Ubisoft with some colleague to create Bad Seed. Um, Bad Seed is an Italian Milan-based startup. We made video games. We started our story in 2012, attending Mind the Bridge, the first European startup accelerator for gaming startup only. We've been three months in Tallinn. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Uh, then we back in Italy, we won another acceleration program. We've been three months in San Francisco, then we back in Italy again. Uh, we developed our first game that I will show you briefly. And uh, we got founded the last June by um, uh, United Ventures. This is one of the biggest uh, uh, venture capitalists in Italy. So our first game is uh, Ship Up. Uh, is a simple puzzle platform. We got one, one million downloads. We were published by uh, Pocket Gems, one of the biggest uh, publisher in the US for mobile. We got featured by Google. We got some good reward. Is available for uh, iOS, Android, BlackBerry, and Windows Phone. And Microwave is coming next month. Then uh, we. Uh, Developed sleep attack. I hope that the video will start. It's not the last presentation. Damn. Okay, sleep attack. Yeah, okay. Thank you. our publisher. So it is a tower defense with a twist that you had seen. So you have the chance to move the, and rotate the background to uh, bring the enemies in the uh, desired direction. Now I will go more uh, uh, deeply into the technical part. So we got uh, good reviews from critics. Uh, we are happy about that. We are keep pushing because it's half science less than a month on IS and three, four days on Android. So you want to keep it, please download it. <laughs> uh, so uh, about the development, we use uh, Unity uh, as engine because we use it also for previous projects and we are comfortable with it and we find it quite uh, cool and uh, powerful for all the uh, multi-platform stuff. So we, we have Perforce for uh, um, uh, version control. We use uh, the cloud um, uh, uh, Photoshop suite, Creative Suite, and Mantis for bug tracking and a tool that I suggest you to use if you don't know it as Texture Packer that is super cool to make Atlas in the best way possible and make you use it easily in a 
every kind of engine from Unity's Cocos and so on. Uh, what we have, we have uh, this is the view that uh, you have you find in uh, Sleep Attack. You have the rotating circles, and we have a lot of we have tons of elements that are alive, that are single elements that are animated. Uh, we want to do have a prospective view over the circles in order to don't have a, like a view that is uh, too much orthographic, too much 2D. Uh, so we uh, decided to have a 3D camera uh, that is actually rotated in game. Um, so as you can see, uh, is uh, looking at the background that is standing on nothing and is 50 degrees rotated. Uh, we have a problem uh, at the beginning that is a wrong perspective on circles. I say sorry because this is not the latest presentation, so uh, some images is missing. Uh, the first, the, the solution that we found is counter rotate every object towards the camera because otherwise we had uh, the object that were smashed on ground and they doesn't feel like they stand up, okay, on the ground. Uh, that was the easiest one. Uh, then we have border artifacts. Uh, who can guess why we have that kind of problem? If you can see, especially there. Well, okay, it's not that the, the problem. There? No, that's a uh, rendering order problem, okay? So what technically happened in that case happened that we have two objects. The object D that should be um, hover the object A is uh, actually rendered before. So we have that the border are blended with the background. Uh, they wrote on the Z buffer. Then the A object found that the Z buffer is already wrote and doesn't merge. Okay, so we had that problem that uh, is given by the fact that all the objects are on the same plane. They are not at different depth. Uh, this is because of the uh, kind of game that we are developing. Uh, the possible solution that we took was to have a very high value on a cutoff shader. That means that the shader will drop the um, pixel where the alpha value is below a certain value, uh, that could work, but that will not have the effect that we expect, since there will be no blending, so we have aliased border, and we, without anti-alias, that would be not so cool to see, and anti-alias was not uh, so affordable in that game. Uh, another pos uh, possible solution was the um, setup of the camera, in order to use the Z distance only, as have been, it would be in orthographic mode. So the, orge, the object were rendered uh, just see the Z distance from the camera. Uh, that would work if we had a 2,000 monkey team, but that's not affordable for uh, a game. Uh, it's really prone to error because we had around 200 objects for each background, so uh, it's very hard to manage. And also, it doesn't have work for moving objects. Since we have objects over the circles, and those objects need to be reordered uh, every time we rotate the circle, so because the uh, rendering order should change, of course. Uh, the other problem that is not related really to the camera, but to the amount of objects we have, uh, is that there are a really high draw call number. As you can see there, we have 252 draw call and just 1K3. So that means that we have a lot of mesh with a small number of vertices. Uh, what a uh, draw call is uh, simple as uh, uh, the objects say, I need to be rendered. Uh, the engine load the material, load the texture, load the shader, and then apply this to all the vertices that we have. 
if we have to do this for a lot of objects, uh, it, it takes a lot of computational time. Uh, okay, the possible solution for this would be use Unity batching, but it won't work for an object that must be animated, as we have, and uh, they are moving around the world, as the one on the circle, so we can't apply this. Uh, we drop that idea, and we choose to create our own solution. We created this mesh merger uh, that is simple as a class that creates a big mesh with all the meshes and ver meshes vertices that we have in our background. Uh, what we do is to up we apply the object transformation animation. Uh, we keep the UV, and uh, we order the mesh from top to bottom of the, um, of the screen. Uh, why this? Because we have objects that are overlapping, and the, way, the, the right way you have to see them is that the uh, most top is the first to be rendered, and then going down, you will have the most in front. Um, so how it works? Uh, every mesh uh, in the shin at the loading register himself to the mesh merger. Uh, we, ha we could have more than one in scene. Uh, so when we have a new mesh that registers the mesh merger, create uh, a new uh, mesh container uh, that will be added in the array of mesh container that keep the transform, uh, an array of vertices, triangles, uh, UVs, normals, etc. There are a couple of things to take care of in this slide. Uh, okay, one is it generates for comparable, and we will see why later. Um, we keep the transform, we don't keep the object, because if we keep the object, we have to ask every frame, okay, game object, give me your transform. We don't need it, so we keep the transform. Uh, the same for vertices, triangles, UVs, and normals. Vertices are simply as uh, 3D point relative to the parent position. Um, so we just need to store them once, and that's fine. Uh, the same for the triangles, uh, UV and normals as well. Uh, the UV, that could be a particular uh, uh, point, because if we have animated UV, we should update them. Uh, so, as I said before, we have a comparable class that have to implement compare to, that simply for us just take the Y position and compare to the other to make us order the mesh in the right way. Uh, we disable the renderer on the original mesh, just the renderer, because we need the object to be updated but, that, but not shown. Uh, this is important for the animation that are running on the object. Um, and then we order the mesh for the first time when they got registered. Uh, every frame, what we do is we apply those transformation to the vertices of the mesh. That's uh, uh, what allow us to have dynamic uh, mesh. Uh, compared to a static batching that has us to have static object without rotation, without transformation, and, and so on. And then we order the vertices as before, uh, but if needed. Uh, we have two uh, stuff to take care of. The first is this bool uh, that just say if we want that this mesh merger do it this job every time. And then uh, we ask to the circle manager that, as you can understand, is the manager of the circles in the game if there is some uh, object that is rotating, some uh, circle that is rotating. So then means that we have to reorder them or try to, to do it. This array.sort uh, is just get the compare to function to order the elements. Um, if we must recompute and recalculate the data, we assign the triangles, the UV, and the normals. Otherwise, there is no need to do it. We just simply have the transformation, but the order is not changed. So our uh, old stuff that make us have a faster uh, solution. 
Uh, we have some pro. We resolved our draw call issue. Uh, we're still missing the images, but you have to uh, trust me. We've gone from 268 to 63 uh, draw call. Uh, they are uh, also comprehending all the enemies, uh, UI stuff, and so on. So they are not just for the background stuff. Uh, we have one draw call for every mesh merger. So uh, usually in a level like the one I showed you before, we have a two draw call, one for circle stuff and one for all the other background stuff. Uh, it works with uh, transformation of the object. It works with animated UV if we need them. Uh, it resolves our ordering problem. That's the coolest thing that we take care of. Um, he, he had uh, some con, of course, as everything. Uh, the script could be a bit heavy on CPU. Uh, it was the first time. Uh, and the mesh, the mesh that registered to the object, to the mesh merger, must have the same material. But that's, I mean, uh, is the base to have a batching because we uh, have just one material and uh, all the uh, vertices compressed in one mesh. Um, one thing. Uh, I'll back here because one thing that I want you to uh, notice is also that we don't have any more, uh, I'm sorry about, again, about the slides, but you, we don't have the stretched and scaled mesh. Uh, when you have a mesh that is scaled, uh, it takes more time to compute the vertices. Uh, in this way, we drop that problem, so if we have any 100 animated uh, object, the renderer takes more time because it has to take the mesh and to apply the transformation on the vertices because are in local, and then see how it works, uh, how, it, how it is rendered. We drop that problem because we have all the vertices already in a local position respect to the mesh merger. So we drop that problem that uh, solved us a lot of um, computational issue. Uh, so we optimized a lot of things. Uh, one of the most important was about dynamic list. Uh, we started using dynamic list uh, as a container for the struct. Uh, so we had this HUD, this go through the list, this uh, remove and stuff like that, that really take a lot of time. We realized that we didn't have really that need. So we just can uh, um, modify the array once at the loading time. So when someone will register to our list, we had it in the list, and we cache the list in an array, and that's fine. Also because if you had uh, stuff to a list, dynamic list, it will take care of resides itself, of uh, call um, memory clean, or whatever. So it takes a lot of time, uh, especially on mobile devices. Uh, so no dynamic list. Uh, so you can see we use it, uh, array dot copy that is C sharp version of mem copy of C plus plus familiar guys. Uh, it was really fast, and the other thing that was really fast for us is uh, optimized quad version. That means that we saw that we have uh, mostly quad. I mean, everything was a quad because it's simple mesh with a UV that is spun over a, um, over a texture, uh, a sprite texture. Uh, the elements that you saw in the background, they are all uh, lying the same texture. It's just a texture with all the elements fitted together. Uh, we, we made that with texture packer. Sorry again, because I have. I had some cool pictures that there isn't. Um, so we had this optimization that make us gain a lot. Uh, just a drop of uh, have a four cycle over four elements, like here, or six elements here. Uh, if you do it for about 200 times per, uh, per frame, uh, it, takes, it takes a lot. Um, just the CPU have 
to the, the OS have to uh, put uh, on the stack a new variable and lock and increase it and so on, and it takes time. Uh, in this way, we have direct access to the two part. Uh, another cool thing is this transform point. At the beginning, we used our transformation, so we made the map. I say just, okay, we do inline stuff and, and so on. But this is really optimized from Unity. Uh, so they make them probably uh, in assembly and it's really, really more fast. Even if you maybe don't need to uh, transform the position, but need just the scale, that's fine. That's even 10 times faster. Uh, and the same here for the triangles. We, we have this direct access that give us a lot of uh, gain in terms of um, computational time. Uh, yeah, that was the comparison uh, <laughs> uh, slide that I'm sorry that isn't here. Um, but what, as I, I was saying, uh, we gain a lot on uh, CPU bound for that. Um, uh, draw call, we dropped from 268 to 65. And uh, we were quite happy about that. I will drop this. So one of the kind of other problems we face it, uh, are the different screen types. Uh, on mobile, there are uh, tons. We have a different ratio, uh, different resolution, DPI, and whatever. And uh, those problems, uh, th those different screen bring different problems. So adapt the HUD, it's up display. Hand up the 3D view, hand up the resolution for the DPI, uh, resolution of the uh, stuff on screen, I mean. So the first issue, uh, the new Unity guide system was not yet available. Uh, we have a beta now, but it's too late. <laughs> so we created our own. Uh, it's simple as uh, another 3D camera that use 3D panels quad, even here, that are uh, just lying in a 3D space so that we can uh, uh, save the relative position to the screen. Uh, we don't have to care so much about pixel perfect stuff because we don't care. Um, so what we have, we have a different camera so we can take it away and uh, it was just easiest for us to manage. Uh, as you can see there, it just drawn the stuff. Uh, this, the elements in the screen just maintain the position relative to the screen. Does, this means that we will resize and repose them while we're changing the screen ratio. So we have the same UI for every device. We are out on Android on tons of different screen it works. And we are out on over the, uh, all over the iPad, the iPhone 5, 4, and so on. And it simply works. Mm, the other issue is the adapt of 3D view. There were super cool comparison there. Uh, but what simply we don't have this problem really because having a more deep camera, more pixel, means that we only need to add more stuff on the border uh, that make us happy. So we had just the background bigger, and uh, we cut some stuff on the uh, more smaller devices, the smaller screen. Uh, the third issue was about the different resolution. Uh, we gone from uh, iPhone 4, 960 pixel, to iPad Retina with the 200, uh, 2048. Uh, that's make a difference when you see the game. So we need to have an SD and HD uh, version of almost all the texture we have in the game. Um, we have uh, basically all the SD texture linked and loaded while all the other stuff is in resources folder that make us load at any time we need. Uh, so in the smaller device, they don't care. It's just as simple as having the same game. In the HD version, they take care of load the HD version of the texture, and that works really fine for us. 
That brings us some memory issue, of course, because we had a lot of stuff. Um, we managed to solve the problem in some different way. Uh, when you load a level, a level, starting from an older one, you will have a moment when you have both levels loaded. That means that you have twice the memory you needed loaded. Uh, that's meaning a lot of crash on uh, devices that don't have so much memory. Uh, so we had a mid-loading level that simply keep a loading interface that uh, is loaded. Uh, Halo has to unload the previous level and load the next one. Um, we load only sound and texture that really we need. So we check in the um, level design that we load a true JSON file, which elements we need really in the in the match. So we just cache everything we need for that match. Um, we don't need uh, to load nothing during runtime in order to avoid frame rate drop, to avoid to be stuck to a clean of cache uh, or a GG collect or whatever. So we just load the stuff once. We have uh, pools of enemies, pools of stuff that we simply reuse with circular window. And uh, the, uh, the other big, OK, no, I guess that is the last slide because it's the old version. So I don't show you uh, everything. Uh, we have about 150 megabytes on uh, SD version average in the level that is not so small amount and twice so 300 megabytes on uh, um, HD version uh, we thought that we were fine with 50 uh, megabytes of RAM that was true for SD version on iOS but on Android we need at least one gigabyte due to the great Android and Java virtual machine that take a lot of uh, memory. Uh, so we had also to uh, take care about every single device to uh, hollow or not to hollow to download the game for Android. Uh, that was quite uh, busy for us and a pain. So that's Q&A and thanks. I'm sorry for the slide. Uh, uh, I don't know why they were not updated. So, sorry yeah. about that, Roberto. Uh, we we kind of messed up a bit the presentations, but uh, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, have all the presentation available for you in the coming days. No questions. Uh, this was the most technical presentation, and I yeah, think I'm we'll see how many programmers we have yeah, now. In uh, the world. Okay, I'm sorry if uh, some of you uh, had bad time, but. <laughs> The technical stuff. So. Hi. Well, I have uh, actually two questions. Yeah. And uh, first, I want to say that I'm not uh, very aware of the technicalities behind Unity and how it works on the render side. So, uh, on the first issue that you had uh, with, um, and that's why you created the mesh yeah. uh, combiner, wouldn't it uh, be easier if, and, or, maybe possible to just merge all the materials into one texture and then just sort by A, A, B, B, disable Z rendering all together and just put everything from top to bottom. But you say put the, uh, they, they, the object share the same material and the same texture right now, uh, as yeah, simple as but, that. But I mean, so you don't need to go through the extra script phase where you yeah. merge it. Uh, so you mean create a 3D mesh with all the... No, no, no. I mean leave the meshes like they are. Yeah? Uh, make, sort them by uh, A, B, B from top to bottom. Okay. That, disable that, the render. How, how, okay. Disable the Z buffer altogether and just let the, the blending do its thing. How do you uh, order them to be rendered from top to bottom? If you draw them from top to bottom, they will be rendered as they are uh, there, there, there is no way to do it in Unity saying, camera, please. No, you, you, OK, Matthew, please uh, say that it's possible. And I, I don't know I, it. I, I am, I'm asking if it was possible to do that. Uh, uh, for as far as I know, no. But the, uh, 
Unity guys will say that I'm wrong, <laughs> probably, so I, I'm waiting for Okay, them. and the second texture about the, the load size and the, the texture size, yeah. is it possible to just load uh, certain map maps from a, te from a texture? Yeah, but uh, what we told that uh, we don't need uh, really map maps because we don't have object that go so far or came near the camera, so they does not change really the size on the screen. Yeah, but you but, can. And let me, <laughs> let me finish. Please and on HD ver and SD version, we would have too much memory load because the map up is all uh, that the text will be there. And I don't know that that uh, was not quite good for us. Uh, yeah, the idea is that you can manually create a map map that actually contains the lower resolution. Yeah, texture. Uh, uh, we and tried. We tried. Uh, we we use that. I uh, don't remember the format, but we never uh, managed to have it working well. Ah, I see. Uh, I don't, uh, there is a format that is support custom uh, map maps because otherwise Unity will create them. Uh, but we didn't came out using it. So I know that there are for sure better solutions than the one we choose. So you are welcome to, yeah, to shut and help at, us. At least on Android, there is a big problem with that. Sorry? At least on Android, there is a big problem with texture formats. So yeah. yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, let's let's uh, give the mic to yeah. Mathieu and see the Unity opinion on this. Headshot, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's yeah, it's it's a bit our fault. Uh, there is a layer index, um, a sorting layer index in the mesh renderer, which is uh, not exposed in Unity 4 and which is exposed in Unity 5. No, I but didn't hear you very well. Sorry. Uh, you know there is layer the layer index oh layer index on uh, on yeah. the sprites usually. Yeah. And there is the same for the mesh renderer, but okay. it's not exposed. You have to call it by yourself on the script, but it's, uh, but it's uh, one way. It's exposed in Unity 5, I think, now. OK, uh, th th you mean that I, uh, the using the layer of the object? Yeah, you could, have just sorted the, you could have just sorted the objects and just changed the layer index from back okay, to front. OK, so that, that means that we have to have, I mean, uh, 100 layers? Yeah, it's just a number. It's just a number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, probably easier that way. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that it's possible to sort it, but I think you did a good job with what you did. So thank you. Yeah, <laughs> for don't shoot me. <laughs> this is going well. I, I think after we are finished here, we can all like sit for until the party starts and make a game, and then <laughs> uh, sell it tomorrow. Uh, 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 I hope <laughs> you want to try the game. I have iPad version here, and then you will love it and you will download it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any more questions for uh, Roberto? No more questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Roberto. you.